Satan uses trials to push us to do things that we don't really want to do, but they're weak areas in us. And we wish that God would remove them, but many times he doesn't remove them when we want him to because he wants that weakness to keep surfacing until we finally say, I am not going to live like this, God. I don't care what you have to do, but change me. Tonight, I want to talk to you about staying one step ahead of the devil. And I think to do that, you have to understand and successfully resist temptation and learn how to navigate your way through temptation. I can honestly tell you that I do not have a message to tell you how to live in this world and never be tempted. So praying that you won't be tempted is just really useless. And I think, to be honest with you, we pray a lot of useless prayers. I think we're always wanting the hard things to go away. And what God really wants us to pray is that we would be mature enough and grow up enough and be strong enough in Him. Now, I want you to listen to what I'm going to say, that no matter what happens, we can behave the same in hard times as we do in good times. And it's not about how you feel, it's about how you behave. You can feel like you are going to blow up with frustration. And still, through that wonderful fruit of discipline and self-control that God has given, be able to control your behavior. And I think it's very extremely important for Christians to understand that we must begin to control our behavior in the world that we live in because people are not the least bit impressed by your bumper sticker, but they are watching your life. They definitely watch to see if you've got the goods or not. Now, we're, none of us are going to be perfect. Sometimes I will catch myself already saying something out of frustration or already being angry, and I have to calm down and repent. But I'll tell you one thing, I may not be where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. And I think one of the things we have to be concerned about the most is if we're just stuck somewhere and we're never getting beyond that place. Just continuing to go around and around the same mountain and spend one more night in the wilderness because we're not willing to do it God's way. So temptation is just plain part of life. I, I can't even imagine how many times every day we're tempted in different ways. And you know, you know, one person might be mature enough in the Lord that their greatest temptation now is to be impatient. But I can promise you that there's other people listening, watching my TV, perhaps even in this room tonight, that you're tempted by drugs, you're tempted by alcohol, there's an eating disorder that tempts you. You may be tempted by lust or pornography or, or who knows, you may be tempted to steal things at work or, or to lie or lots of different things. And we have to begin to conquer these enemies because they are enemies. Those things are enemies to us. And I have discovered a most wonderful thing in the last couple of years, and it has helped me so much. And I try to tell people this all the time now. I don't want to have a conference where I don't tell people this. And we kind of sort of know this, but I, it's just become very real to me that everything that God tells us to do in His Word, everything is for our benefit. Everything that He tells us to do. It's not for Him. I mean, sometimes it's for other people, but for example, forgiveness, when God tells us to forgive somebody who's mistreated us, it's not even really for that other person who's mistreated us. It's for us. So we don't have to live in that prison of anger and hatred. So for me, like even to work with God to conquer impatience, that's going to make my life better. If I don't have to be upset and frustrated 
when I have to wait on something or something doesn't go my way. So everything, everything that God tells us to do, everything that you hear me teach this weekend, if you'll work with God to make that a reality in your life, it's only going to make your life better. You're going to have more joy, more peace, more victory, and more power. There's a lot of things that we do that are power draining things in our life. There's many things that we say that are power draining things. And we need to learn how to add power to our life, not deduct power from our lives, because we need power. This morning I had something frustrating happen early and you know, early is not as good for me as a little later. <laughs> it's, it, it just seems like, you know, if the devil starts on me too early, it's a little bit harder than if I, you know, get a little time with God, get a little coffee, you know, like Pastor Tommy Barnett says, thank God for Starbucks till the anointing kicks in. Amen. <laughs> And uh, I, won't, I won't go into the details of what it was. It's just a, just a detail of life. You know, something that, a duty that I have to fulfill in a situation that's just something that I know that I need to do for God, but it's not necessarily something that I enjoy all that much. And it's one of those things that I never know when something's going to come up. And, and when it does, I have to go take care of it because it's involving some other people. And sometimes they come up when I don't want to deal with them. And this morning, one of them came up. And so I said, I just wish that sometime in my life, I would not have to take care of somebody else. <laughs> Come on now, how many of you know what I'm talking about? All right. And, but I said it to a friend of mine and an employee. And of course, you know, when we say things like that, we really want a little bit of self-pity. I mean, we really just want somebody to say, oh, man, yeah, I'm, I, but instead she says to me, man, I wish that somebody would finally take care of me too. And I said, I don't want to have to feel sorry for you. I want you to feel sorry for me. <laughs> so we got a good laugh out of it, but I thought, oh man, the devil's starting early and I'm not even in Hershey yet. <laughs> and then of course, Dave has been fully Dave today doing all the things that Dave does when I don't need him to do them. <laughs> he fixed my hair about six times tonight in this back room back here. He kept going, doing this and this. And I'm like, I don't like people with their hands in my hair. I don't like it. And then the girl who actually does my hair helps me with a lot of other things and she travels with us. And so then she gets over there and gets in my hair because he's in my hair. And so now I have both of them in my hair and then then he starts telling me, this blouse is crooked. So she's saying your blouse is crooked. And so we're, we're doing it. Then I got the microphone on and he said, oh, that's sticking out too far. So then he's over here doing this. So then the sound man was in there doing this and Dave was doing this and they were doing this. And I'm like, one person can only take so much. Now that may not seem like a big trial to you, but it was tempting me <laughs> to not act like I'm about to tell you that you need to act. <laughs> Amen. Matthew 6, 13, Jesus said in his model prayer when the disciples said, teach us to pray. One of the things that he said that we should pray is, lead us not into temptation. Now, he didn't say, let us not be tempted. He said, lead us not into temptation. And one of the things you're going to hear over and over in these four sessions is simply that one of the main reasons why we fall into temptation rather than conquering and overcoming temptation is because we don't do what Jesus told us to do right there. We don't pray ahead of time and regularly that when we're tempted, we will recognize it right away and not get into it. 
We don't pray like that. I don't believe that very many people pray like that. I was not praying like that, and I know better. And I have added that to my prayer life now on a regular basis. One of the things I want to talk about this weekend is to know yourself and to know your weaknesses and to know the areas that you're likely to fall into Satan's trap if those things come up and pray regularly, God, when that happens, because I am here to tell you it will happen. There's no point in even praying, oh God, please don't let that happen again. God, no, anything but that, God, please, not that. And you know why we don't want that to happen again? Because that's the thing that pushes our buttons. And that's when we have to really exercise ourselves to behave the way that we believe God wants us to behave. So we, we, we're happy to pray that that will never happen, but I don't think it really occurs to us to do what Jesus said, to simply say, I know that that's going to come my way in due time. But when it comes, I want to be ready. And so I'm praying now that first of all, I will not be deceived and I will recognize it immediately when it starts and that I will not come in to that temptation. Can anybody say amen? amen. If you're tempted to overeat, then pray on a regular basis. When I sit down to eat, God, help me not to overeat. Help me to stop the moment that I get full. And I know that God can help you do things like that. I know that. I used to eat to where I would be so full that I just felt so bad, I just couldn't hardly stand it. And I can virtually say that I never do that anymore. But it's because I had to pray my way through that. Now, everybody here has probably got some areas that you can start praying about that you, when that happens, when that happens, not you hope it doesn't happen, but when that happens, that you will not come into that temptation. Luke 22, 40. And when he came to that place, he said to them, and this was Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, pray that you may not at all enter into temptation. Now he's telling his disciples, you're about to be tempted. He was being tempted. And we all know that he prayed. He prayed through. He prayed until he sweated great drops of blood, resisting that temptation. Pray that you may not at all enter into temptation. Verse 46. And he said to them, why do you sleep? Get up and pray that you may not enter at all into temptation. Now, to me, this is important. And I'm going to probably camp on top of it for a little bit, and I may say it throughout this seminar a little bit more than you'd like to hear it, but I really believe in the depths of my heart that this is one of the main reasons why people are not overcoming things. They try to overcome, they hope to overcome, they want to overcome, they go get counseling to overcome. <laughs> they pray they won't be tempted, but you have to I mean, they hope they won't be tempted, but you have to pray that when you are tempted, you will not come into that temptation. Can anybody already think of some areas you should have been praying about a long, long time? You see, I happen to believe the prayer works. And I believe that when we pray sincerely, that it opens the door for God's power to come in and help us with that situation. I remember a friend of mine saying one time, so really, Joyce, then what you're saying is don't just pray, but pray in that area that you're having an issue with. And I believe that we need to do that. Temptation's a part of life. The Bible says temptation must come, but woe be unto him by whose hand it comes. We want to make sure that we're not a temptation to somebody else. But we have to realize that we are going to have to deal with temptation. I wish we didn't, but really I can't even say that. Because to be honest, if we didn't have these things to deal with, we would be such weak, wimpy, pitiful, pathetic Christians. We wouldn't even need any faith. If we never had anything to deal with, we wouldn't even need any faith. Now Dave watches our TV program every morning, and he said, today you were teaching on finding the treasure in your trials. And it's amusing to me. How many times I go places to teach, and I end up in that seminar teaching something similar to what I've been teaching on television. And you guys, probably who watch television, think I do it on purpose, but I don't even know what's on. 
So it just proves to me doubly that this is the word in due season that God has for us for now. So everybody can just perk up and say, this is for me. Let's hear it. All right. James 1, verse 12. Blessed, happy to be envied is the man who is patient under trial <laughs> and stands up under temptation. For when he has stood the test and been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. The King James says, blessed is he who endureth temptation. Even Jesus was tempted. In Luke, we see that he was led by the Holy Spirit out into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights. Some of these trials that we have are divinely permitted for a special purpose in our life. And that purpose is to make us stronger. That purpose is to let us practice our faith. That purpose is many times to cause us to see things in us that we are ignoring and don't even realize are there. You don't see your true self when you're in church with your church face and all your churchy friends <laughs> singing I surrender all. That's not when you see yourself. None of us see ourselves then. We're, we always behave when we're with people that we want to impress. But when we really see ourselves is when we're at home behind closed doors, when things aren't going our way, when the pressure's on, when we've been disappointed, when somebody hurts our feelings, when somebody makes us angry, when somebody lets us down. Come on now, I'm preaching good. And there are seasons in our life where the devil really gets after us. And it's not just one thing. It's over and over and over and over. And sometimes things come so fast that you begin to think, there's no way that I can stand this. And that's one of the things you don't ever want to do. Because the Bible says that God never lets more come on a person than what he can endure. But with every temptation, God also always provides the way out. Always. So we need to learn to say, if this is what I'm dealing with right now, then God knows what I can take, and there's a purpose in it that I don't understand. There's a treasure in this trial. And God, I'm not even going to pray for it to go away. I'm going to pray that you'll strengthen me so I can make it through it and be the man or woman of God that you want me to be. There were many things in the early years of my marriage that I prayed that God would make Dave stop doing. <laughs> and of course, you know, he's grown spiritually just like I have. But there are many of those things, after 43 and a half years of marriage, many of those things that I prayed for Dave to stop doing, he still doeth them. <laughs> but see, the good news is, is I don't care anymore. <laughs> I've changed. So now it doesn't bother me. And I'm sure that you realize that we always want other people to change, but so we're not aggravated. We always want other people to change so they don't bother us. But the truth is, and I know to some of you this is disappointing and shocking, but the truth is, is God wants you to change. Now, that doesn't mean that all the other people are doing everything right. I don't mean that. And that doesn't mean that they don't need to change. But you can't change them. You can't change them. But there is a way for you to go ahead and enjoy your life even if they never change. I said there is a way for you to enjoy your life even if they never change. <laughs> and that is, is to let God change you. Oh, God, please change my husband. God, please, cha please change this situation to work. God, please, please change my life. God, please change my circumstances. But how many times do we pray, God, please change me? God, please change me. And use whatever tools that you have to use to change me. God starts by dealing with us inside. We'll feel that inside 
gentle, dealing, pressure thing from the Holy Ghost. And God would like us to get it that way. Just the same as when you tell your children something, you'd love them to get it. But if we don't get it that way, and most of us don't, then we'll get pressure from out here. Starts coming through our circumstances. So between the pressure outside and the pressure inside, eventually the flesh gets crushed, and we do what God wants us to do. As I said before, many times we go through seasons of trials, and then you may, that may be followed up with a season of great peace in your life. And then you begin to mistakenly think that you've arrived. <laughs> and then here comes another series of trials. Now see, don't, don't even begin to think, well man, I thought being a Christian was going to make things, you know, better and I wasn't going to have all these trials. And, well, the better thing about being a Christian is if you're not one, you'll never handle them right. And if you are, you can learn to rise above what's going on in the world. One of the things that the Apostle Paul said that is so important is my determined purpose is to know Him. Not to get rid of my problems, to know God. I'm determined to know God and the power of His resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead even while I'm still in the body. See, if you get rid of this trial, that's no big success because there's another one around the next corner. You can get rid of this grouchy person, but there's another one that's going to move next door to you or going to get the desk next to you. <clears throat> but if you change, if I change, then we can actually pray and mean it. God, send me somebody that needs help. Send me somebody, God, that I can show the love of God to. See, we have, to, we have to let God use us. And in order for Him to use us, we've got to have some preparation. We've got to have some schooling. Some of you have wished to go to Bible college. Why don't you just say, God, send me to the school of the Holy Ghost. He'll have some training for you. Dave, 43 and a half years ago, wanted to get married. He was 26 years old. He was dating three girls, and he said to God, I really want you to send me the right wife, and God, make it somebody that needs help. <laughs> and he met me. And after three weeks, he said, what's wrong with you? I need help. Amen. Luke 4, 13. This is the record of the various temptations that Jesus went through. Everybody say temptation. temptation. Now see, temptation and trials are linked together a lot, and many times you'll even find the words almost kind of interchangeable in the Bible, because really it's our trials that tempt us to do things that we shouldn't do. Even if you've got an addiction and you're trying to overcome it, alcohol, drugs, overeating, sweets, whatever. I mean, I still remember when I, when I quit smoking many, 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 many years ago, every time that I'd have some kind of a trial going on or feel some kind of pressure, the first thing I'd want is a cigarette. And I'm sure that people feel the same way that have had problems with alcohol. Some people do that. Some people eat when they're under stress and pressure. So trials, Satan uses trials to push us to do things that we don't really want to do, but they're weak areas in us. And we wish that God would remove them, but many times he doesn't remove them when we want him to because he wants that weakness to keep surfacing until we finally say, I am not going to live like this, God. I don't care what you have to do, but change me. Come on, is anybody home in the house tonight? Well, I believe one of the main reasons why we fall into temptation is because we don't pray ahead of time to resist the temptation. In Jesus' model prayer, when the disciples asked him to teach them to pray, 
one of the things he said is, lead us not into temptation. And especially if you have an area in your life where you already know that you tend to have a weakness, you want to make sure that you pray on a regular basis about that. This little boy's name is Wawin, and he's nine years old. And when he was six years old, he'd already been working in the dumps for quite a long time, digging trash out of the dumpster that could be sold for 50 or 60 cents a day. Here in Cambodia's capital, the city of Phnom Penh. When the pastor came to this village and wanted to start a school, his parents would not let him come to school at first because they couldn't afford to lose the money that he was making. But the pastor offered to pay them the same amount of money that he was actually making when he would go to work in the dump, and then they let him come to school on that basis. Well, after a short period of time, they saw such a change in him that they said, no, you don't have to pay us anymore. We want him to come to school there. So we're hoping to see the same kind of transition in hundreds and hundreds of children's lives. I don't believe that we can look at a tragic situation like this and do nothing. And I believe together, we can make a huge difference in a lot of children's lives. Thank you and God bless you. Do you ever feel like God is angry with you? This is a widespread problem both inside the church and outside of the church. An understanding of God's love will set you free from guilt and condemnation. So many people run from God in fear rather than running toward God. Decide right now that you won't spend another day in fear and know that God is not mad at you. Bestel nu God is niet boos op jou via onze website joy-meyer.nl of bel 026 2022 100. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meijer.nl/slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.